So I was wrong. As much as I was talking short term about a lower Bitcoin, I think today we need to talk about all the catalysts for a massive bull market. Today, I'm going to go through every single catalyst. There's a lot. There's a lot. There's chapters below, by the way, for what I think could be one of the biggest crypto bull markets we'll ever see. Although I am going to talk about altcoins, I do think there's a precarious, tricky position with altcoins, and you'll see in the analysis. So don't skip ahead because they haven't bottomed yet. I've said this in previous videos. Don't expect an alt season yet. Expect Bitcoin to do something first. Now there's a change of format. This video will be much longer, more concise, using the news and analysis to back up my opinion of this being a bullish market. However, if this video suits you, please comment and let me know what you think. And also, as always, like the video. Let's get the algorithm going. So the first real simple bit of this video is we're going to talk about Catalyst. The first one, and I will show you the screen right now, is an obvious one. Germany have sold their $3 billion worth of Bitcoins at the bottom. Oops. <clears throat> so 3,846 was involved in the final transaction around 62,000 Bitcoin. Now, 50,000 Bitcoin was sold over a course of a three-week period. That was giving us them sort of $54,000, $53,000 levels, which is traditionally quite a normal bullish correction, right? The ferocity of it, and this is what we're going to go into the analysis, will be how fast in which we've recovered. Pretty damn freaking fast, right? So that gives you another vibe of, oh, bullish. Now, when you think about this, there's a couple of clouds, and one of the other clouds that I have, I'm not going to really mention this video, is obviously Mount Gox reimbursement plan. Some of that's already happened, and it's already going ahead. It's not really spooked the market too much. But what did was actually this, the Germany one. And I tweeted about it, I laughed and joked about it, saying, you see what's going to happen here. Two years' time, co countries will be buying Bitcoin, and these will be buying back. It's just one of those things that you just know is going to happen. So yeah, bullish catalyst number one is an obvious one. Germany have stopped selling. Now, the next part is kind of obvious. I talk about it a lot. ETFs. Now, why does this matter? You're probably wondering. Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Germany selling, Mount Gox distribution, who are buying and who have been buying very aggressively? These. Unbelievable amounts. And you'll see, right? In terms of this, Farside have the greatest track record of tracking it. That is a scary run. Look at the amount that BlackRock's buying. Look at how much they hold. Look at how much overall in the course of the totals in the week. This has been a flawless, pretty much, July. What's been happening? Mount Cox re re redistribution. Germany selling. We've been at the lows at certain points, and these have been buying. So it gives us a bit of a, a vibe that, well, they're not really that scared, are they? Pretty good in terms of a bullish catalyst, in my opinion. Now, if you've been in crypto long enough, you'll know that we have a liquidity cycle. We have a four-year cycle traditionally, right? So does the world, funny enough. I and mean, it's called the global liquidity cycle. It's called the M2. Now, on the screen, I'm going to show you a simple chart. It's not going to mean much to you, but you can see it goes up and down, up and down. Up in the bull market, down in the bear market, la 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 la. We have had its correction, and we are starting to pull up. Let me show you another chart, just to give you more of an insight. This is kind of where we are right now in terms of the global liquidity cycle. We are slowly starting to trickle back up again. When we then talk about quantitative easing, when we talk about interest rates going low, money printed turning on, global liquidity is going to return, and guess what's going to happen? Well, money's going to go somewhere. It ties up pretty damn well with the whole four-year cycle. I am going to talk about halving in a bit. Don't worry, I'm not going to gloss over it because I think that's very, very important too. But this is really interesting. When you look at US domestic liquidity, look at how it kind of comes around and all those little upticks that tends to happen, it gives you an idea of where the money is going to go. And if there's a small uptick in this, it creates a little bit of a spike. So when we look at the likes of here, this period here where it shot up, well, guess what happened? That was one big bull market. Likewise, here the first proper first cycle. And where we are right now, we're much lower. Even if we shoot up these sort of levels here and liquidity is returning, interest rates are low, and it's designed to give you that economic growth, 
Well, money's going to go somewhere. In a bull market, where's it going to go? Um, yeah. Another thing that's kind of obvious, in my opinion, is Tether. Tether is currently on a bit of a rampage. Let me explain what I mean. The market cap. So, as you can see, money's going up, market cap, money printer go burr. Basically, what you got to think of it, this is a currency, right? So, it gets printed a lot. And it only gets really silly printed when there's demand. When it goes low, or down, essentially, it would indicate that money's, you know, drying up a little bit, it's been moved out of the market, whatever it may be. Now, fundamentals are simple. Well, money printer go burr equals more money going in. And that's true. And this is why the market capitalization kind of metric is a bit of an iffy one. But in terms of this, it just calculates how much money's around. And that's quite good. The volume's high. You know, the market capitalization keeps growing every single day currently. So that would indicate that something is happening and money is required to do certain buy-in. Did I mention the word buy-in? Well, tomorrow, you may well find that a lot more people in a different demographic that you're used to might well be buying something called Ethereum. You may have heard of it. Well, there's an ETF coming tomorrow, basically. So we believe. Now, I'll be the first to admit, I don't think it will do as well as a Bitcoin one. But now there's more of a kind of prestigious element around, oh, these Bitcoin ETFs are pretty good, right? Maybe the Ethereum one will be just as good. You can kind of bet that people's opinion will be like that. And they often say in the traditional markets as well that certain things will be tested and then over a period of time, then others will do it. We've seen that. We've seen how quickly as well this ETF has kind of came about for Ethereum. Now, obviously, Ethereum is different to Bitcoin. People have a different opinion. I know, it's fine. But the reality is here, it's another option and it makes things very, very interesting. So with that, this will be the first bull cycle with an Ethereum and obviously a Bitcoin ETF and maybe more. We've all heard the noises about Solana. We've heard potential rumors about Polkadot. XRP could well have... What about a basket of coins in the next year? There's so many unanswered questions and we're going to go a bit deeper in terms of why these are going to become probably very, very popular. But before I go there, I need to talk about FTX. Creditors are going to get their monies back in 2025 by the sounds of things. Now, I know not everyone's the biggest fan of this and the money's not going to be full full because they're not going to get the right prices. But ultimately, there's $16.3 billion in cash ready for distribution. Huh? Huh? Aye. So a lot of money is going to come back into said market, probably. Why? Bankruptcy, credit has been made full, whatever. And ultimately, everyone who was on this platform were crypto, right? You get the idea? So when you think about this going into a bull market and they're going to get some money back, they're not going to get all back because ultimately if, if this this was happening when Bitcoin was like 16, 17k, so obviously if you had Bitcoin, you're not going to get the full amount, obviously. But the reality is there's a lot of cash here. People will be very happy to get money back. And where will that money go? Well, probably back in the market because why not? Because So with that in said, it's a big thing to understand the obvious. And let me just mention one stat. The ETFs at the minute is roughly around 17 billion. This is 16 billion in cash. Mm -hmm. mm. It's a lot in it. Mm. If you're not yet done so, check out the links below. Patreon, I do more videos. Obviously, I'm only doing one a week now, but on Patreon, there'll be five. It's all going to be there. Now, something we need to talk about, I glossed a little bit over it with the ETF situation, is what is on the screen. Bitcoin conference. A certain Donald Trump's going to be there. Don't understand how Kathy Wood has a prestigious kind of plaque on her name because she's one of the worst investors I've ever seen. No offense, but her fund's terrible. Michael Saylor, obviously, Robert F. Kennedy. You've got a lot of Bitcoin kind of big people, right? There's a lot of obviously senators and stuff. Yeah, huge. We're going to talk about it because this is going to be a pro Bitcoin election, in my opinion. Certainly when you look at what Donald Trump's been doing, you know, who he's been appointing, we'll talk about that. But that is a massive bullish cartilage considering where things have been. Donald Trump previously said he didn't really like Bitcoin. So this is happening from Thursday to Saturday. Expect a lot of bullish quotes, bullish noise. Expect some information to come out which may well shock you. It's the way the market is. And in a bullish market, stuff like that is really, really useful 
to give you a bit of an edge in terms of the market, right? The problem we have is timing. It's interesting. A few months before the election, Biden stepping down, things can get very tasty now. Now, as I say tasty, it's because of what happened the previous weekend. Donald Trump assassination attempt, it made the market rise by 5.2% on that Monday. And that was really, really good to see that, you know, that element is kind of still alive in the market. Now, before that happened, you all know the market sentiment was in the gutter. Fair enough. But that just shows you how powerful the market can be when it's bullish and when something happens that sparks a revival, a change in sentiment and allows buying behavior. So when we talk about that, pro Bitcoin, Donald Trump currently right now favored to win. He has also appointed some pro Bitcoin people in his cabinet for running mate. I will talk about that in a second. There's also rumors about certain treasury kind of positions that could well be pro Bitcoin too. What's interesting is the Bitcoin conference could well lead us to understanding a lot more about this for the next couple of months, which could spark a bullish catalyst. Now, as I say, just going on a bit more about that, obviously JD Vance is an actual Bitcoin holder. He has been a pro Bitcoin person for a very long time. And when we talk about this, obviously holding Bitcoin through Coinbase, he has been a open criticizer of the SEC, which could be an interesting point in terms of how governance will happen in terms of the SEC running for ETFs and making it even easier for other coins to happen, allowing things to go on and whatnot. So all of this is a genuine thing to understand that there's going to be a huge change of the guard, certainly if he gets in power. And I know I'm in the UK, but ultimately it affects the market. And I'm not a Donald Trump fan. I'm not a Biden fan. I don't give a cack really, but it's my opinion. But reality is there has to be some sort of change in terms of behavior from Certainly, look at me in the UK with the FCA. Look at me talking about exchanges. It's a nightmare. And we need to talk about that and address that in a separate video. But ultimately, the SEC has been a pain in the ass for a lot of Americans. It's just the way it is. Things are going to change. Gives me a good time to shill this. Check out the link below to Bluefin. If you are in the UK, you're probably struggling to do any futures trading. Certainly, if you're new, you can't sign up. This one allows you to sign up. No KYC. You might as well get an account and have a bit of a play with it. Makes sense, though, right? So remember, I literally mentioned at the start of this video, maybe a bit precarious for altcoins. Well, let's talk about that. I think this is important. So I mentioned before in a previous video, and it did really well, and a lot of people hated the idea of it, that maybe we're not quite at that point of, oh, let's go into altcoins, let's ape into it. And I will show you one of the charts in a bit why. But ultimately, it is still very much a Bitcoin season, which is actually really bullish because we need Bitcoin to move first. We need to allow people to get the eyeballs and then money will rotate over into altcoins. And we're currently here. Now, at the start of the year, we had a mini alt season. It was actually quite good. You probably remember it. You might have also jumped in at the wrong time and got absolutely destroyed by it. Oops. But the reality is we are currently down here and it doesn't look like it's going to change anytime soon. The only really thing that's really obvious right now is obviously ton. That's been flying. If you remove that, it really is a Bitcoin season. Everything is quite low and some stuff not cataclysmically low like bmb's maker injective link yeah near yeah polka dot for example even dogecoin there's some stuff that's horrendous but the reality is most of these are meme coins pepe bonk you know stuff yeah floki just <laughs> you get the idea so it's interesting to know right be mindful with altcoins, and I will talk about the chart in a second. Don't worry. Now, something that is glossed over an awful lot is hash rate and difficulty adjustment. We're just going to talk about the hash rate here. Hash rate essentially is computing power in terms of security and the mechanism of the mining situation with Bitcoin. It has been pulling back quite aggressively since the top of that market kind of cycle ride uh, with the old seasons, and it kind of turned off. But it also coincides perfectly with halving. I'll talk about that. So... We have been pulling back and now we're starting to pull forward again. Basically, mine is starting to turn on again and the competition is starting to grind, which is good. This is basically the simple element of dominance between miners in terms of hash rate and more and more nodes getting put online. And also companies like, you know, CleanSpark, Riot, etc., Marathon have all been kind of upscaling and building more machines and ultimately more sites and more units, which is going to be good. This is good for miners, right? And it also follows price. This starts going up, well, you bet your bottom dollar that the market's going to go up as well, which brings me perfectly on to mining data. 
halving. Halving was not that long away. It was actually 93 days. Fair enough. And we're going to get the situation where mining blocks go down and supply just goes and stays as it is. And when we're long gone and dead in 100 years or wherever it will be, this will stop mining, right? That's fair enough. Interesting point, I know. But the reality is, often with Bitcoin, after 100 days, it is roughly the same price or below the price of what it was at halving. We're kind of following that trend again. And then over the course of the next year, scarcity happens because less and less Bitcoins are going onto the open market, which is fair. When that happens, you've obviously now got the ETFs buying. You've got the Mt. Gox distribution happening. You've got Germany giving away their Bitcoins for absolutely pittance, right? Who are buying it? ETFs. Eventually, we're going to get to a point where the open market will not be able to handle this, and therefore the scarcity is pretty damn high, therefore increasing the price of Bitcoin. This is absolutely massive in terms of understanding the bull market catalyst of everything I've just said into the scarcity. The one thing about Bitcoin that is massive, absolute scarcity. And when we talk about it in obvious terms, when Bitcoin goes high, people take notice. If Ethereum goes high, people take notice. What happens then? People then want to buy shit coins, altcoins, meme coins. It then flows and rotates into this massive cycle. And it gets interesting. When you add to the fact of global liquidity cycles, when you add to the fact of a potential pro-Bitcoin government, when you add into all of those situations around it in terms of how it all kind of moves, it's pretty damn scary. It's following the four-year cycle to a T. Again. And to showcase this in an obvious sense, here is the chat. This is when halving roughly was, approximate kind of dates. 93 days, give or take around that point. This is kind of where we were. We were around here. We're just about, just above that. We're in lower since it. And a lot of people go, oh, but Matt, halving was an absolute nothing burger. It always is. <laughs> it goes up, then it goes down, it goes sideways, and then it does whatever the hell it wants. And then it goes absolutely berserk. That is a scary point. So let's talk about Bitcoin. My personal opinion is we are going to probably range for a bit. I've mentioned in previous videos, Q3 is often a bit of a lull, bit of a shitty kind of period, but it might be a little bit different. Why? As I've said, we've got a lot of things happening. Election, Trump, you've got Bitcoin conferences, you've got money cycles changing. Q4 could be absolutely critical and bananas, and there will be many videos about how to manage all that stuff. But ultimately, we might well just range. I've said many a time, and in my personal opinion, $83,000 is probably going to be the level where people get very, very excited. So if we're looking at the impulse from the low to the high, we're just motoring. We're above the 618, which is I thought was critical resistance. It wasn't. It was absolutely wet paper. And we're probably going to continue going on. When we look at the overall kind of spectrum from the start of the year, bear with me around this point. One second, let me just get this right and correct. Yeah, we're on that point. So what happened here? We had an impulse. We've pulled back to the 50% mark. Now, I often disagree with using the 50% mark because it isn't a Fibonacci number, but ultimately, it's an obvious number for psychological elements. Perfectly kind of hits it. And my, my overall understanding, let me remove that noise. If we didn't break above this level, and like hold it and above the EMA and stuff. And this was a critical level, right? We probably would continue going down and into a retest of this 52K. That hasn't happened. You know why it didn't happen. Someone missed. But you get the idea, right? That created a huge catalyst spark. And that was potentially, could have been a black swan. Or it is a black swan, right? That's so many different factors. And absolutely, when I read that notification, that was like, oh my God, right? What century are we in for one? Crazy, right? So that failed that situation. And this is why technical analysis is good, but also bad and it's weak in certain terms. It's weak because it can be affected by absolutely anything. And we're continuing going up. But for me, this hasn't corrected enough yet. It will correct. It will probably go into this level and probably people will panic and then it will probably shoot up again. But for me, it might well be a slow bleed into Q3 down to these levels again and then it will continue going higher. However, Bitcoin conference this week, people might say some things that might well spark things. And we've got to look at the obvious, which is on the screen. Elon Musk has decided to put laser eyes back on his profile picture. That could change some tunes, couldn't it? So yeah, things will be interesting. For me, I think eventually we're going up here. 
eventually. It takes time. You've probably seen it on my pinned tweet. Follow me on Twitter if you want. I've always talked about 83K is the level. The big break and the clear all-time high breakout, which will get the media talking, going towards that 100K level. That is when things will go a bit bananas. And maybe Ethereum's beyond its all-time high, which, let's be honest, we need to talk about Ethereum, don't we? If any of this is absolutely over your head, which is fair enough, check out Learning Crypto. The offer ends on the 31st of July. Summer crash, <laughs> lol. 50% off any plan. You can do it yearly, get 50% off. Huge saving. Now, Ethereum looks like a dog's dinner, in my honest opinion. Might change. I've gone short on Ethereum at this level of resistance, thinking, you know what, the ETF goes out tomorrow. It might be an opportunity for it to kind of crash and burn for a little bit, then kind of spark back up into life. Look what happened with the Bitcoin one, right? So when we talk about that, cool. The reason why I'm saying that is this looks very different to the Bitcoin chart. It hasn't moved. Look at the BTC pair. It's just melting over the course of this week. It's just going, it's just absolutely plummeted. The Ethereum, bear with me, Ethereum.d, la, 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 there is slowly breaking down. So it hasn't done anything. This is why I was like, I'm going to go short. Why not? Let's go for it. Boom. And that could be a massive, massive, oopsie, I'm on the wrong chart. There we go. Massive reflection in terms of what could be happening. This could be a new breakdown, but not too crazy. Not gonna, I don't think it's going to go down here. I just think it's just going to fall into here somewhere, might well land around this point, this 3,200 level maybe potentially as a bit of market kind of, oh my God, bit of volatility, then kind of continue going up. But when we talk about the obvious here, this whole level all the way up here and stuff like that is kind of, I think, good. Let me just show you something, right? Let's just remove that for now. Obviously a big ass range. When we talk about, you know, the overall, bear with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm new to this. I'm not really, I'm joking. When we talk about this, there we go. The overall kind of correction from this big impulse, we went right down to the 58% mark, 50% uh, mark right on this nose here. What is interesting is when you zoom out and you look at where these extension levels are, they're in and around that all time high. The next leg up could actually be this leg here. The correction's probably already happened. There may well be a pullback first, and then it continued driving forward into this level here. And again, when we talk about it, what about this level, this 618? What about if Ethereum is 5,000, 5,500? Everyone's going to talk about it. Everyone. ETF volume might be high. Everyone's going to get very excited and starting to tickle themselves. All of that could well create a catalyst for the market money to go boom. Hello. Now, I talked about this not so long ago. Let me just remove all the mess. This is the stable currency dominance. It's not looking great. Let me go to the higher time frame so you can see it. We have pulled back into a level, but this is still where we are. This is down is good, by the way, if you're wondering. Lower the dominance would equal more money going into the market and into all coins and stuff like that. Right now, it's kind of here. It could well continue going higher. But the big chart that I need to really see talk about is this one. Total 2 slash BTC. Remember I've been saying don't buy old coins yet? Well, you can. Let me just explain. You can buy key level of support at certain levels. Certain levels. Big, historic, weekly levels would probably be good. But look at this. We are still on the weekly time frame below the EMA 21. And we have been pretty much since freaking December 2022. Hmm. Not good, right? So what does this mean? It basically means that the old coins versus BTC are getting smashed. And most things are. So it's kind of telling you not to do certain things. Now, for me, I would buy key levels of support on your crypto and hope that it kind of turns around because it eventually it will bottom. When you start getting above the EMA and you start seeing levels of support, might be a better chance to go into the market at a bit of a safer point because it, it will probably start to go upwards. Total 3 looks exactly the same. By the way, it looks just as bad. Be mindful of it. So when we talk about that and the situation is obviously these dominances, they're huge, these dot Ds. Obviously, Bitcoin dominance is high. Mm -hmm. Ethereum dominance, not looking great. Could go lower. Dot dominance, as you can see. BNB dominance looks interesting, but ultimately it's the it's a retail coin, isn't it? Because of sentiment with an exchange. So all of these is huge. But the others dot D, good old situation here. Buy a good asset at the low, take fucking profit at the top. It gives you an idea of what's happening. We are still at the start of this. So don't worry. Altcoins may not move as crazy as you think. 
But eventually they will. And you'll start to notice it on these charts first because you'll start to see the ramp up. And sentiment is absolutely massive in this market. Huge. It's ridiculous. Bullish catalysts, all rhymes, all goes in a circle. And even though the charts and some things look terrible, ultimately things could get very, very spicy in the next coming months. But anyways, video floating around here help you in terms of when to realistically get out of this market. More profit videos probably coming down the line.